This video is on the objective use the law of sines to solve SSA triangles, right? The side side angle triangles. So these are triangles where you know the lengths of two sides and one of the angles that's not formed by those two sides. This is also referred to as the ambiguous case or the uncertain case, right? Because when you're given two sides and an angle that's not formed by those sides, there are several different possible scenarios that you could come across where you might not be able to form a triangle with that information, or just one triangle, or two triangles are possible with that same information. So it, there's a lot to check. It's a little tricky. All right. Um, so. And if you want to see more about it, look at what all those different scenarios are. Uh, click on more instruction. Look at their videos, their notes, their examples, and hopefully those help you out. All right, so here we're given you know, a triangle ABC, where angle A measures 54 degrees. Side the side opposite angle A is called little a, right? Remember the side opposites are given the lowercase letter version of the of the angle name. Uh, it's 24 units long, and then the side opposite angle C, which would be little c, is 28 units long. And then what kind of a triangle? You know, if if we can even form one. Remember this 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 SSA case. There may be scenarios inf you know, where you're given information that wouldn't even form a triangle. All right. Okay. So on the piece on a piece of paper, I'll I'll start. Uh, let me get rid of the calculator for now. We'll we'll bring it back later, maybe if if we can if we can form a triangle. So we're given an angle, and I'm going to draw a, a, what I think I I'm going to eyeball here is you know 54 degrees. This is angle A. And then this side here, that's adjacent to this, I'll call this side little c that was given to us. And little c was, you know, said to be 28 units long. And I'm going to dot this other side, make it, you know, because I don't know if we can actually form a triangle. I'm going to make this other side dotted. And then we have the opposite side, you know, little a, they said was 24 units long. And then this angle formed by A and C would be angle B. And now the big question is, can we form a triangle? Can this side here, side A, even reach this other side to form a triangle, be able to form a triangle? All right. So in order to answer that question, I'm going to calculate the height of this triangle. So from point B here, right, where angle B would be formed, I'm going to create a right triangle involving the angle that I know, angle A. Right? So I'm going to drop you know, a perpendicular segment to this imaginary side, and this is the height of the triangle. Right? the distance from you know, this side to the other vertex, the opposing vertex. All right, so what I've got here is a right triangle. Right, you see it from A to point B and then down the height. And let me find this height. Now, if you see this, you know, if I, if I got this right triangle here, I know, I know angle A is 54 degrees. The height is the side opposite, right? It's the side opposite in this right triangle. So I, I want to find the opposite side, and then the, the length C here is the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So I need the opposite. I know the, I know the hypotenuse. I'm going to use the sine, right? The sine of this 54 degree angle will be equal to the height divided by 28, right, opposite over hypotenuse in the right triangle. So this height, h, 
is, you know, multiplying by 28 here, is 28 times the sine of 54 degrees, all right? So I'm gonna, and I'm gonna round this to maybe like two decimal places or something, all right? So I'll pull up a calculator. Make sure I'm in degree mode, which I am. And then go 28 times the sine of 54. All right, and this is 22, all right, this is 22 point, you know, 65 units long. And I'll put that in my drawing. This is approximately 22.65. Right. So we are we have the scenario where the length of A. See this opposite side here. The opposite side is longer than the height. Right, it's greater than the height. So when I, if I imagine this point here being a pivot point and start swinging this side A around in a circle, right, take side A here and make it like the radius of a circle, it's going to hit here. And I can form a triangle. All right, there's, there's one triangle with a length of 24 there. So that, and again, that's because it's longer than the height. It can, it, it can reach down, you know, it can reach down to this third side. You know, if this side were shorter than the height, I could swing it around all day long, and it wouldn't reach this third side, and I couldn't form a triangle. But not only is it longer than the height, but it is shorter than this, this side C. So the, 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 the opposing side, the opposite side of the angle I know, it's longer than the height, but shorter than the other side I know. So that means if I swing it around, it's gonna come back up, you know, it's shorter than 28, so it's gonna hit through here. It's gonna come back up through here somewhere else again. It's gonna hit the third, it's gonna be able to, if I swung this side around, it's gonna hit this third side in two different places. So there are two, right, again, this is, this is one of the, you know, several scenarios. Again, I'm hoping you're looking at more instruction or reading the text because I'm not going to do all the scenarios for you, all right? Um, you know, in the first video, there was the scenario where this opposite side was longer than the first side. So it just, you just made one triangle. Um, here, we have the case where the opposite side is shorter than the first side but longer than the height. And if that's the case, two triangles can be formed. One acute and one obtuse. Right. Two triangles can be formed. And I will draw a picture of these two. Right? One is kind of like a wider one. Right, you see that one here, there's triangle one like that where, again, this is 54 degrees, this is 28 units, this is 24 units. All right, that's the one where the side A hits to the right of the height. And the other triangle that can be formed is where side A hits the side to the left of the height. And it's like a skinnier triangle, like this, right? It would, it would be obtuse, where again, this is 54 degrees here, this is 24 units, this is 28 units. Same information, All right, but two triangles can be formed. One acute and one obtuse. All right, and we'll have to, and I'm gonna go through and solve both of them. All right, I'm gonna go through and solve both of them. All right, so let's take a look at the acute one. So solve the acute triangle. So again, I'll draw a little picture of it, like do do do. Right, 54 degrees here. That's angle A. Little a is 24 units. Little c is 28 units. Then this would be angle B. This would be angle C, and this would be side little b over here. All right. Now um, the only the only thing I could find using the law of sines right now, 
I know both the A information, I know angle A, I know side A, and I know half of the C information, or I know side C. So I could find angle C um, using the law of sines. Right? This, here's the law of sines. Remember the sine of angle A, the sine of 54 degrees, divided by side A, right, divided by 24, would be equal to the sine of angle C, which I don't know, so let's just put C there, then divided by, and then, you know, the side C, 28. And then I'm going to solve this uh, for angle C. So I'm just going to multiply by 28, and we'll get the sine of angle C alone, right? The sine of C equals, and then, uh, you know, 28 times the sine of 54 degrees divided by 24, and then we're solving this for angle C. Now, if you remember solving trig equations, you know, in this triangle, angle C is going to be an acute angle, right, in this triangle. But in the other triangle I'm going to solve, my angle C is going to be an obtuse angle. So there are two solutions to this equation. One acute, one obtuse this time. So one of these, so here's the acute solution, which I'll use in my triangle here, the acute triangle. Just take the inverse sine. Right? Just do the inverse sine of this. Right? The inverse sine of this 28 times the sine of 54 degrees uh, divided by 24. So I'm going to punch this in my calculator and uh, I'll round it to like one decimal place, you know, get the, get the angle to one decimal place this time, why not? All right, so I'm doing the inverse sine of all this, you know, 28 times the sine of 54 degrees divided by 24. Close the parentheses. All right, so the acute solution is approximately 70.7 .7 degrees. All right, so this angle here in this acute triangle is 70.7 .7 degrees. The other solution is the supplement of this. All right. If you look back at this picture, you know this angle here is my angle C, the 70.7. .7. This angle should be the same. So then the other angle C is just going to be whatever adds up to 180 with it. Right? It's the supplement. So the obtuse solution, which I'll use in my other triangle, right, the obtuse solution is just the supplement. All right, so in this case, C equals, you know, 180 degrees minus 70.7 .7 degrees. So angle C would be approximately, you know, subtracting these, be 109.3. Uh, yeah, degrees. So in the, this, this will be, this will be used in the obtuse triangle. This is used in the acute triangle. All right. So we'll come back to this. I'm going to set this aside, this 109.3 degrees. Alright, so, so now I've got angle C. All right, now I've got angle C. And once I have two angles, I can find angle B right, in this acute triangle. Now 54 and 70.7, .7, those add up to uh, you know 124.7 and all three of them should add up to 180. So then this angle here, you know, if these add up to 124.7, then this should be 55.3 degrees, about. So then angle B is approximately 55.3 degrees. And you can add these up. And right, again, the, this would be uh, 126 plus 54, right, would be 180. And now that I have an angle B, I can again use the law of sines to find side B, right? 
So remember the law of signs, I can flip those over. I can use the A stuff, you know, side A divided by the sine of angle A, the sine of 54 degrees, should be equal to side little b divided by the sine of angle B, right, the sine of, you know, the, again, I know it's a rounded number, but it's it's going to be pretty close. It's going to be you know, reasonably close to what the actual a accurate answer is. And then I just simply multiply by the sine of 53 to get B alone. All right, so B equals 24 times the sine of angle B, right, 55.3 degrees, divided by, and then the sine of 54. All right, and I'll punch this in and round this to, you know, ten, the nearest tenth or something. So 24 times the sine of 55.3 divided by the sine of 54. So that side, side B, is approximately 24.4 units long. All right. Okay. Sorry about that. You might be hearing some chainsaw noises. There's people working outside. I apologize. Um, so look, at, there's there's the one triangle solved. And once you solve a triangle, you know, just double check it real quick. Make sure that the largest angle is opposite the longest side. So that'd be angle C here. And yeah, 28 is the longest side. Uh, also, make sure the smallest angle is opposite the smallest side, right? And the 54 degrees is the smallest, and 24, the opposite side, is the shortest side. That should always be happening. All right, so that was the acute triangle. Now, I'm going to solve the obtuse triangle going back, and we're going to use that obtuse solution for C. All right, here's the obtuse triangle that could be formed. And it would look like this, right? A lot skinnier. Where again, this is 54 degrees. That's angle A. Side little a was 24. Side little c was 28. This is angle B. And this angle C, I've already said, right, this angle C here is 109.3 degrees. Right? And again, that's just the supplement of the previous angle C, right, from the acute triangle. All right, and then once I've got the, oh, and then we need, now here's little b, right, little b here. And then once we have two angles, you can easily find the third one, uh, 109.3 plus 54 would be 163.3. So then angle B here would be, uh, you know, 16.7 degrees to make a total of 180. Right? So angle B is approximately 16.7 degrees. And then uh, then I can do the same thing, you know, find angle B. Remember, so little b divided by the sine of angle B, so the sine of 16.7 degrees would be equal to, and then I'll use the A information again because I know both of those pretty accurately. No, they're not rounded. I like using as few rounded answers as possible. And then side A is 24 divided by the sine of angle A is, you know, sine of 54 degrees. And again, just, just multiplying by the sine of 16.7, get B equals 24 times the sine of 16.7 degrees divided by the sine of 54 degrees. And I'll just do this thing on the, uh, when I, you know, I, I'm just going to re-enter my last entry and change the 55.3 degrees to 16.7 degrees. Because that's all that changed right, from the previous calculation. And we're getting about 8.5 units. And so in my, in my picture here, this is approximately uh, 8.5 units. And again, take a look now. My, now this obtuse triangle is solved, and look at it again. You know, make make sure the largest angle has the largest side opposite it, which it does. You know, angle C and the side C is the biggest. And then the smallest angle now is angle B, and it has the smallest side opposite it. And that, again, that should be happening for any triangle you 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 solve. All right? Great. Now again, they didn't want all that. 
but I'm just showing you, you know, if there are other questions that come up where you're asked to actually find what certain values are, you can use the law of signs in this ambiguous case, right, the SSA. So yeah, this is one of those cases where it can be either acute or obtuse. Two triangles could be formed. All right, again, read through, you know, look, I'll show you in the answer explanations here how they used both solutions to that one. See, they used the 70.7, .7 and they got to check the, you know, the, the, the supplement, 109.3, and like, oh, look, 109.3 is okay, right? And so you got two triangles to form. So I guess that would be another quick way of doing it. Instead of, cal you know how I calculated that height? I guess you don't really have to calculate the height. Just uh, solve for angle C and then, you know, try both solutions, the acute one and the obtuse one, and see if a triangle could be formed. You know, do do the angles add up to something, you know, it could all three angles add up to 180 degrees. Yeah, then it, then that in that case, a triangle could be formed. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I personally like calculating that height uh, and then checking which scenario am I in. And you'll see the, those scenarios also in the more instruction and in your OpenStax book uh, for this section. All right, so hopefully watching me go over this, um, you know, looking at the more instruction if necessary, reading the book, you know, seeing all those scenarios. Again, I'm not going to do a video on all the scenarios, right? There's a lot of them. Um, just, you know, to, to determine, you know, can I form north? You know, it's all really about that height. I like that's why I like calculating the height. You know, if the opposite side is shorter than the height, you can't form a triangle. If the opposite side is equal to the height, you can form one right triangle. If the opposite side is greater than the height but not greater than the than the first side that you're given, then you can form two triangles. That was this video. This video's problem, you know, that, that that was the scenario we saw here. And if the opposite side is longer than the first side you were given, never mind the height, then you're only going to be able to form one triangle. All right, so lots of scenarios. So like I said, I'm only going to do these couple videos. Hopefully watching me solve the triangles with the law of signs in these couple videos helps you. Uh, looking at the answer explanations, hopefully that helps you. You know, looking at the more instruction, I'm hoping all this stuff helps you when you're working on this material on your own. Right, thank you very much for watching.